Hi everyone, this is Teacher Dennis. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss about the new Kurzweil KA90 stage piano. As a musician and music teacher, it is always exciting to share my knowledge to my students, my friends, and of course to you. I always go for the vintage and the latest in instruments and even if I get my hands dirty and sweat a lot, I always get a new t-shirt from my wife. Isn't that great? So if you find this video helpful and if you like it, please don't forget to click the subscribe button, Music Man Teacher Dennis. So here's the KA90 stage piano. To start with, we have to plug it in, a power source. So I got here the power adapter. Here's the power adapter jack there. So plug it in, a power source that you can Turn on. Then later on we shall use the sustain pedal and so I'm also going to plug this at the other end of the uh, rear panel. Okay. So now we're about to start making music and playing sounds. So KA90 keyboard has 88 weighted keys. Weighted means it feels like a real acoustic piano so if you are already used to a real or like a wooden piano shall I say that then you will find this one very much the same and so you can play it with ease if you try it so KA90 comes with two colors black and white but I chose white because it looks really cool and looks like white chocolate Okay, so um, we also have a bender and of course our power button and volume control, master volume control. So let's turn on the keyboard. So now that it's turned on, we can't wait to start playing around with the voices. Voices means the sounds of the instruments that we're going to choose. So this area here, this bunch of buttons are the voice buttons. So you can choose any instrument here that you would like to use in your performance. So usually the first voice will be piano. So this one is a grand piano uh, voice. So let's try it. grand piano then let's choose strings and my this is my favorite things so strings grand piano so here's strings well I'm sorry I thought I was not part of the interaction huh? okay so let's do some other things, some like modern stuff like finger bass, finger bass. Okay, so that's the sound. Let's see. So let's so. Uh... So you can use the bender there for effect. So you can it's as if you're sliding it on the real bass. So the next feature that we're going to fiddle around with will be 
style. So here's the area where the style buttons are located. And we have different music styles, Latin, Tango, Samba, and others. Now, I'm going to try pressing pop. And by pressing that, and pressing the start stop button, it will generate an auto accompaniment music as I play a chord. So let's try that. So that one is already prepared. So I'm going to prepare my chord and try to play some music. Let's try. Let's try another kind of music style, maybe an upbeat one, samba. And let's uh, make sure the beat or the tempo will be fast. So I'm going to press the up and down arrows of tempo to make my accompaniment a little bit more upbeat. So, and then I'm going to make sure as well that my choice of voice will be what I like. So my preferred voice will be vibraphone, which is number eight. So I'm going to press that two times and vibraphone will be generated. So um, I'm going to press the start stop button again to begin. So here we go. piece and so that's how you combine voice and styles the other cool features of the ka90 are the split the dual and the transpose features this in here we have lower but the function is split and I will explain that later first I'm going to try dual Dual is controlled by the shift button. As you can see, the shift button has a black line there and dual and all the other features are having also a black line. So if you press down the shift button, it will activate the ones on the black line or the names there written on the black line. So I'm going to try dual. Dual means to layer a voice to another voice so it will sound thicker. So I'm going to layer grand piano and church organ. So if I press a chord, they will all sound together. So I'm going to press grand piano. And then I'm going to choose dual by holding down the shift key and pressing dual. And that activates the light there, meaning it the function is correct. So after the grand piano, I'm going to choose church organ. Let's see if it works. You can hear the piano and then as I press it, you can also hear the church organ. So that's a simple explanation and simple manipulation of the dual feature. Next is the split feature. Split means to divide your keyboard into two voices. One voice at the upper part of the keyboard and another kind of voice for the lower part. So we are going to choose grand piano as our upper part of the keyboard uh, voice. So after choosing your voice, then you can hold down the shift button and press split. In here, split is called lower, but um, the function is still split. So it's just a change of term. 
So now that I activated the split button, I'm going to choose my church organ again for the lower part of the keyboard. So I'm going to press church organ and let's see if that works. So this one I'll press first. So that's church organ alone. Let's see if my grand piano works over here. Thank you, Lord, it worked. <laughs> so. so that's the split feature. So that's one cool thing so that you can um, do different creative things in your playing. Now, as I play the split point, of the like a boundary from the church uh, organ and the grand piano so this is the point where in the grand piano is already playing so that's what we call the split point now I usually want the split point to be in the middle I want to move the split point to middle C so how do we do that all you have to do is go back to your split button and press it and hold it press and hold then press your middle c and you can see in the display it's c4 okay that means middle c so now let's check if the church organ sound will move up a little bit now okay so it's my piano starts here so the church organ is now here so I would like to really make it that the piano will be here. So I am going to press again the split button and move my split point just one step down. So my piano can be played on the middle C. Okay, so here we go. So that's split. Next is the transpose feature. This is the transpose button. We don't need to press and hold the shift key for transpose feature. So transpose is a very important feature, especially if you're a player, a piano player and a singer at the same time. So if your song is too high for you or you are quite nervous about singing that pitch, then the transpose button is very important. So you can lower the pitch of your instrument so that you will be more confident in singing so for example you are singing can you feel the love tonight so i'm gonna play that okay now i'm going to sing along with a piece so can you feel the love that seems high to me um i'm going to lower the pitch one step down. So I'm going to press the transpose button and go straight to the yes, no, plus or minus button so that I can lower or uh, adjust my pitch. So this, now, this one, I want it to be lowered. So transpose one, so minus one. So I'm now confident to sing the Can You Feel the Love Tonight. Can you feel the love tonight? I'm so confident I want to finish it up, but it's not, it's another video na lang. <laughs> okay, so that's transpose, very important feature. So the next topic is tempo and metronome. So tempo is very important, especially if you want to use the style buttons here on the left. Tempo, will, tempo button will increase or decrease the speed of your music style. So I'm going to give you a demonstration by choosing one style here. I'm going to press this samba style. And Try to play a chord here on the left side. So I'm going to do the same thing as I told you a while 
in my other topic about music styles, press the start stop button and try the samba beat. Now if you wish to decrease the tempo, you can just hold, press and hold the tempo button. And as you notice, the tempo, the speed decreases. So that's how you manually manipulate the tempo by pressing and holding down the down and up arrows. You can also adjust the tempo via the shift button. So this is more elaborate, but I think it would be important for you to know this one. So I'm going to adjust the tempo by simply pressing and holding shift button and moving to this side of the keyboard where all these other parameters are written. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the keys that are marked tempo. So here's tempo. And I'm going to adjust the speed of the music or the speed of the style by pressing and holding the shift button and choosing the numbers here that is included in the tempo bracket. So I'm going to choose 85. Now to choose 85, you don't just write 8 and 5 right away or push the 8 and 5 key right away. You have to include a 0. So here we go. 0, 8, 5. So it registers there in the display, 85. So here's the speed of your Samba music now. That's the speed. How about I'm going to press shift button and choose another uh, value. I'm going to choose 100. So 100 will not include zero anymore because it's three digits so one zero zero so 100 is uh, very easy to manipulate so let's press the zamba button and start stop and check so the tempo obviously increased so that's one way of changing the speed of the tempo or the music style so one other kind cool thing in changing the tempo is to press and hold the shift key again and go to the bracket where the tempo mark marks are written and move to this key next to the tap uh, label. So I'm going to tap maybe a certain beat. Okay, so that's the speed of that beat. So let's try if it changes as well the samba that we were trying to play a while ago. <laughs> so that's very fast. Okay, so that's how you change tempo. Shift button, hold it down, and go to the parameter where the tempo is being uh, marked there. And that includes the keys that are within the bracket. So just choose the numbers there. If the numbers are two digits, you need to press zero first before pressing the other digits. Okay, so in metronome, metronome is a device to help us play on time and in the beat. So it's very helpful for pianists to have a metronome so there will be really precise beat. So here's the metronome button and we can press this one to check okay this metronome button was also playing and with the very fast beat that we just adjusted now i'm going to hold the shift button and tap the key here so that it will slow down okay metronome beat is already slowed down So if I were a uh, pianist exercising, I would play like. And so on and so forth. So I'm going to 
um, help you try to adjust the metronome in different kinds of time signature. This present time signature is 4-4, four, four, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. But there are songs or maybe exercises or, yeah, songs that you can play and using metronome to really make sure that you're on the correct timing that are 3-4. So how do you do that? The same thing. We have to press and hold the shift key and go to the fall board of the keyboard where the labeled, the labeled part is called the uh, metronome. So we have here metronome, labeled here metronome, and we can hold the up and down arrows here. We can press it to change the time signature. So now I'm going to check if I press this down arrow. So that's 4-4. Four, four. I'm going to press it again to make it 3-4, as it, you can see here in the display. That's 3, so 3-4. Three, so let's check if the metronome is now 1-2-3. Okay, so the metronome now is changed. You can also change it to 2-4. So let's see. So that's how you change the time signature of the metronome so that you can play along with it correctly. So that's it for tempo and metronome. So the Kurzweil KA90 stage piano can actually record five songs. Let's try. I'm going to press the record button and F1 comes out of the display. So F1 means you can save your song at this bank. So we can also choose another bank to, to save your song. F2, F3, F4, and F5. So uh, but I'm going to choose F1. So after, after that, after the F1 appears, you press the record button again. And the red and green light blinks. That means we can start recording. So I'm going to place a sample piece. And after playing, I press the record button again. And then to play my recording, I'm going to press play stop so I can hear it. So that's what will appear on the display. Then I pre press it again and my recording will play. Okay, so that's how you record. Now if you want to delete your recording, all you have to do is to press play stop again then press record button and delete will appear on the display and all you have to do is answer no or yes here so i'm going to say yes and so your song is deleted so that's how you record in the ka90 we are nearing the end of our discussion Next is the rear panel. So I'm going to point to the back of the KA90 and point to you the things that we need to know. So here we have your power adapter and it's already plugged there. The next uh, outlet is the auxiliary out outlet. And then this next outlet is the auxiliary in outlet auxiliary out means you can plug a cable here and connect it to a sound system and uh, that's how it functions auxiliary in uh, you can plug a cable and connect maybe an mp3 player or other sound devices so that it will play in this keyboard speakers so by the way KA90 has four built-in speakers. 
Next is the sustain pedal outlet and it's already been plugged. Sustain pedal is very important in playing because it sustains the sound of your chords and make your playing more vibrant and bit broad. So it's very important. Sometimes if we don't have a sustain pedal, your playing will sound a bit dry. Okay, you will understand that as you play more and more. <laughs> now, the next one is the MIDI out, uh, MIDI instruments, for MIDI instruments. Uh, this one is going to connect to another instrument that is capable of MIDI as well. So MIDI means Musical Instruments Digital Interface. So it's another, it's like a communication between other devices or musical, musical instruments. And the last one is very convenient, the USB terminal. So you can connect a USB cable here, connect it to your PC, and use your keyboard as a controller. So controller, that means you can, uh, if you have a recording software in your computer, you can record your playing as a digital data or file so that you can uh, compose uh, and record it along with the other instruments that you have chosen in your computer software, music software. And you can also use this connection, the USB terminal, to maybe make a score. So instead of using the keyboard of your computer, you can actually press the notes here or the keys here so that you can write your composition or maybe um, make your own arrangement of a particular song. So these are very important features as well and um, as you play and you uh, enjoy more of the musical world, you can tap into more of these. Last but not least is the headphone outlet located here at the front part of the KA90, just near or below the bender. So, the first headphone outlet lets you listen to your playing or performance via the headphone, but it's still going to be heard by your audience. So that's uh, important if your your venue is already a bit noisy because of the crowd and you can but you can barely hear your performance so this is very convenient so I'm gonna plug the headphone jack there and play it's still making a sound then I can also monitor my performance via the headphones so that's one uh, headphone outlet number one the headphone outlet number two is the one that will mute the keyboard and make you practice uh, silently especially during the night or not to disturb anyone so now it's just sent through my to the headphone so i can hear it play okay so that's a very cool feature here two headphone jack To sum it all up, let's combine the features that I discussed a while ago. I'll play a piano first on the right hand. sorts of stuff if you always keep playing and exploring your keyboard. So this is teacher Dennis saying don't forget to subscribe my channel Music Man Teacher Dennis. Bye!